G'day guys, Troy from FM Life and welcome back to another episode of Football Manager for Dummies. So today we'll be having a look at the dynamic screen and um, everything that goes along with it. So dynamics has been a thing for Football Manager for the last couple of years, uh, I think since 2018, it w uh, which it was introduced. Now a lot of people thought this was probably running in the background in terms of um, managing your players' morale and everything that goes along with that. Um, so, But in 2018, it became... Um, a, it, become a little bit more to the forefront um, of Football Manager and uh, especially uh, gave a little bit more focus to managing uh, your players' morale because a lot of times in Football Manager, a lot of parts of the, a big part of the game is actually managing the players' morale and managing, um, you know, how your team gel together. So it is a big part of the game and it can actually affect uh, results on the field. So if you're a new player for Football Manager or you've, uh, you know, been playing for a while and you just don't see your squad morale or your squad dynamics as a, as a big factor in performance, um, I've got news for you. It really does make a difference. So stay tuned for the video. We'll be going through the whole uh, dynamics category. Um, if you are enjoying the series so far, please leave a like on the video. It to, to, to helps me know that you're enjoying the series, you're getting something out of it, um, and it does help the channel out as well. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. All right, enough of the admin. Uh, let's get into the video. All right, so we kick it off with the overview page, and that is uh, just a representation of basically a couple of these pages put into one. So it gives you a good indication on how you're actually traveling um, with your team uh, and also just with the team cohesion. So this is separated over three different categories. You've got team cohesion, dressing room atmosphere, and managerial support. So each individual category has its own measurement of success, as you can see there with the bar. So this is a save that I'm, you know, if we're coming towards the end of the year. So this is, you know, getting into the save. When you first set up a save, you might see this in the red, but don't panic. Um, there is ways to get it up. So first off, we'll talk about team cohesion and what it actually affects. So team cohesion can actually affect uh, players' attributes when you're playing a game. It, can, it affects um, how well your team gel together. It affects actual attributes, as I said, um, as we can see here it will affect uh, players vision and also positioning and I think there is a couple more but I can't actually remember which ones they are um, so team cohesion how you get it uh, to a certain state obviously is playing well playing well together um, playing with the same type of group of players um, when you are playing so when you do uh, come over to the so, sorry over the tactics you can see the little uh, little line so that's relationships that uh, players have built together so if you are playing with a consistent squad uh, overall over a season or a couple of seasons that will actually get better with time and that will improve as I said before some of those uh, key attributes um, they also can be affected with uh, team training as well Okay, so as I said, um, you can affect it with team training. So as we, um, if we click on to any category and if we have a look down, um, just down with the primary focus, um, you can see that some of the key, some of the categories actually will focus or slightly increase team cohesion. Um, so there's certain categories that increase it a little bit more. Um, don't know exactly which ones will increase it a lot. I think match preparation, we'll have a look at match tactics. Uh, yeah, so I think match tactics is probably one of the big ones, probably teamwork as well, so greatly increase. So... When you want to probably increase that maybe the fastest and maybe choose more training categories to increase that team cohesion is in the preseason. So preseason is not just about getting fit. It's also about building building a team bond and gelling the players together. Uh, now, if you're not in the first season, maybe you're in a second, third season, and you brought in a couple of new players, they haven't exactly got the relationship as the lines will show. So what you need to do is to build that team cohesion pretty fast so you can get into the season on the right foot. Okay, next up we have the dressing room atmosphere. So the, what this affects or how it, how it is affected is with general form. So at the moment, my one has taken a hit because my general form is not very good at the moment. Um, so that will keep on going down if I do uh, let that slip and I don't address the issue of, of the player morale. Um, also, the player... Um, happiness at the club so that they could be unhappy for certain reasons uh, we will get into that when we go over to the happiness tab um, but they could be unhappy for certain reasons so making sure that you've got um, majority of the majority of your players happy um, at any good time will give you a better dressing room atmosphere so a couple of good ones we have we have uh, we have a lot of players of a similar age so when players of similar age and also personality they kind of gel together a little bit more they're a little bit happier to work um, with each other um, so that is in uh, the the dressing room atmosphere so the managerial support of your players can be key in essentially keeping your job at times um, so you can upset 
uh, a few of the players. Um, but if as long as you've got a strong influence over the side, and we'll get into the hierarchy in a second, as long as you've got the highest influence in the side, um, you will be in um, with players not coming with you with little gripes of not playing um, frequently enough. They're just happy. They they do support you as a manager, and they do support what your um, the vision you're trying to bring on for the club. And they won't come with you with every little gripe. So um, with managerial support, if you are uh, a new player, what I would recommend, well, for most players, to be honest, if you are playing uh, uh, in a side with um, high reputation, such as uh, Manchester United, Real Madrid, um, or even any uh, Premier League side or um, top top flight side, is try to choose when you are choosing the manager. And we did discuss this in the first video. Try, try to choose the badges and the playing experience to ma at least match the club because that can have a, a major impact on your managerial support. And that is going to make it quite difficult to actually um, just build the morale to begin with um, in, in your squad. So that can be quite important early on to get that right. All right, so moving on, we won't touch the issues. Um, we'll touch that in when we have a look at happiness. So moving on to the hierarchy, and as we can see, nice little pyramid. Um, you've got you up top, where hopefully you are um, the most influential uh, member of your squad or of your whole club. Um, so in that, we have team leaders, highly influential, influential players, and others. So obviously, it's going to go downscale. So if you do say for an example um, upset one of your team leaders or your highly influential players what is going to happen is shit's going to roll downhill so every single or not every single uh, player but a lot of these players that uh, um, under him and also in his core group social group which will kind of goes hand in hand but in the social group will actually get upset that you've upset one of his friends and I've just done the the rabbits kind of marks of uh, an air quotes um, <clears throat> so if you've upset one of his um, one of his core group or someone in his group that they're going to get upset as well so that once again is going to be an unnecessary hit to morale which will affect the performance um, so it's not always saying that you always have to bow down to these team leaders or these highly influential players but you might have to uh, tread a little bit more carefully when you are dealing with uh, say transfer demands uh, and also just uh, renewing contracts or an, in particular playing time on a side note, if you are looking to do a long-term save with uh, with any club for your team leaders and your highly influential players, I will try my best to get uh, players within those uh, highly influential groups to actually be of a better personality. So we will be looking for professional because a professional player or a player with professional personality, well, that's a lot of P's there, um, they will be um, more professional. So they won't gripe about the little things. They won't come, and come at you with every little um, gripe they have in terms of their playing time. They won't ask for a new contract if they score two goals. Um, they're a little bit more professional. They get along with, they get on with their job a little bit more. And what happens then is if you have got the professional players in the higher groups, that will then, then once again, roll downhill. So your players that are underneath them in their, or in their own core uh, social group will actually pick up those traits from those more professional players. So always handy if you can. I mean, if you've got a player when you first join a club, in the team that that's a team leader maybe has a personality that's not very desirable maybe it's um you know not very determined it's light-hearted it's um you know there's a couple of bad ones there that's normally come on a bit later on the game balance is balance but it, you know it could be a lot better uh, maybe that's a player that you'd be looking to sell uh, especially if you don't see him at the club long term um, that might yeah upset the apple cart for uh, for the meantime but it's going forward it might be actually uh, better for the club Okay, moving on. So we touched on the social clubs before and the, in this club, you can have many different social groups and sometimes players are just on their own. Um, we have two separate uh, core social groups. So typically they're of the, they've been at the club at the same kind of time. They've got a similar personality. Um, we have uh, two groups. So one, the first group, once again, it has been at the same club. They've got a roundabout or generally uh, a fairly professional personality, which is, you know, the higher that can get, the better. Uh, a little bit more professional. The secondary core group um, is light harder, which is a little bit worrying, and hopefully we can get some of those players maybe out of the club if that 
if that social group kind of shrinks down and we bring in more uh, players with a with a more professional personality, hopefully that will blend and increase the personality of some of these other players. So that's within social groups. So we did talk about it in the hierarchy and you can see as you click on a player, they will kind of highlight what kind of social group is in. So if you're looking to... Um, as I said to you before, if you're going to upset a player in a certain social group, there's a good chance that the players within his core group will actually um, will come to you and also you'll lose morale with that player. So it's just unwanted uh, things that happen. So that's why the next thing we're going to talk about is happiness you know, and how to kind of combat this before it comes an issue. Uh, so I don't um, actually don't want to look. My happiness is quite bad at the moment so we can see um this is down to the poor poor form and i haven't to be honest with this save this is within my beta save i did this a little while ago and towards the back end i wasn't really concentrating i didn't really care about it because my eye was on my main save um which is not stupid of me but i just yeah couldn't be bothered with it at the time um so the morale is is pretty bad and we've got a couple of concerns there from a couple of players so the main one uh, we'll have a look at because we've um, we can automatically set this from the team leaders. So we've got a promise, number one, to Paul Pogba. Uh, we've got a concern. So when we click on there, we can see his concern. Oh, no, you can't actually. He was, I think his main concern is his um, is his promise. So he wanted to leave the club if we didn't get Champions League football, which um, which we've got, but it doesn't matter. So we, we had to keep that promise. If we didn't keep that promise, it'd be even his morale would go down even more. Most of his social group will also go down, but then would have to sell Paul Pogba, which is something I didn't want to do because he's in-game rated as a world-class midfielder. Um, there's other things there that go along with happiness. You've got training. So if there's a player that is not quite happy with his overall training, maybe he doesn't agree with the individual training or the additional training or maybe just the general training schedules, uh, this will come up here. So it's a good thing, especially within training, if you haven't set up... Um, because a lot of times we're training, and I've done it myself, I'll set up a lot of attacking training, but I won't really focus on either goalkeepers or um, or defenders. So, um, And when I came over to training, I noticed pretty much all of my defenders were complaining. So they wanted more defending training, which is you know fair enough. So that's when I had to go back into the training and actually just change up a few things. So that's uh, something that I wouldn't have ever gotten if I didn't come over to this happiness screen and just have a, a, a vague kind of look and see, see how I'm traveling with the players. A couple of other players are quite upset with me, and number one is one Matt, and he's uh, he's not happy with the club, but he's not happy essentially with the playing time. And now in Football Manager 2020, it's actually narrowed down exactly the playing time or the the current playing time that he's getting. So in a contract, I've got him down as a regular starter. He is. Um, his expectations is to be at least a fringe player, and I'm actually playing him at the moment as an emergency backup. So that's a quite a bit of different difference to what I've actually signed him for or what his contract actually states. So in saying that, when you are um, looking to sign a new player or yeah, you're just looking to uh, extend a player's contract, just keep in mind what kind of uh, playing role they're going to have and don't overpromise his playing time. Um, because at the end of the day, yeah, he will sign and he might sign the contract and you won't lose that player. But he's going to get upset. He's going to kick and moan. You're going to upset the whole apple cart. You're going to upset the whole uh, his whole social group. And um, yeah, it's just not worth it. Just be realistic. If you can't give him the playing time, might be an option to sell him if you think that he's long term going to be the future of the club or be a big big kind of stay at the club then yeah give him the game time maybe you'll sell the aging player um you know that might be a little bit better than him but you know you're not going to get too many more years out of him um so that's just yeah and we've got also Lindelof I think is also complaining so he's down as a regular starter for some reason he wants to be an important player um uh, but we've We've been playing him as a regular starter, but he thinks of himself a little bit more. So I think he's one of the players that are going to be asking for a new contract with an important player, star player. And I'll have to think to myself, am I going to play him long term as an important player? So he might be, um, you know, the, the scenario where I say, look, we're probably not going to play you as a key player, important player, and actually look to sign. If I was going to, uh, going to continue this save on, I would actually look to sign a, a better centre-half than him. So he might be a player that I just look to sell. Um, 
you know, it is what it is. That's that's business at the end of the day, and not everyone can have the same kind of playing time. And that brings me on to, uh, I, I suppose, the overall morale of your player. And as we can see, the overall morale is pretty bad anyway. Um, overall happiness as well. This kind of goes on hand in hand, and all these different subcategories of happiness. There we go, and all the different smiley faces. So, what can you do to increase a player's morale? Um, essentially, the main thing you can do is win games. That's going to be the best thing you can do for a player um, and your whole squad overall is to keep on winning, keep on performing, make sure, um, you know, that's why you're going to make sure your tactic is, <clears throat> you know, is well balanced and it can, um, you know, win uh, win a few games on the bounce. So in, in saying that, that's not all you can do. Um, also, what you can do is constantly have interactions with your players now in the last video we talked about um notes so in the inbox no not inbox in home notes and what i did say is just to set little reminders to keep on talking to your players because a lot of times we'll just skip through keep on pressing the space bar until we get to a game play the game go 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 um but if you do take the time to actually talk to your players you can actually increase their morale so if you have a look just for an example i don't know when the last time i did this was uh, Sergio Romero, um, speak about. So when we want to speak about, we can have, we can praise, we can we can warn the player, um, we can ask him to talk to someone about uh, intentionally or agreeing playing time. So maybe we'll ask him to talk to Matza, but I think that's probably a flock and a dead horse there. Um, but uh, praise player can be quite handy. So praising conduct, not exactly why it's in the, not exactly sure why it's in the game, but it is in there. Um, what's on your mind, boss? So what we want to do is just. Commend him for whatever. So he was that good. He went up to fairly good. So if we go down for the whole squad, they can get a little boost of morale and that will help going into the next match. The other thing you can do is also play, uh, praise the training. So what I normally do is come over to training, go to individual and just see what the tra uh, training rating is. And if they have got a high rating, for me, my cutoff, uh, especially with my first team, is from eight and above. If they've got eight and above, I would uh, tend to... Uh, the praise of training essentially so i just want to praise he was at, uh, fairly good i think he went up to very good or something like that um on the flip side of that and they will also get a boost out of this if they're not performing too well in training you can actually uh warn the player that they're not doing too well so i want to criticize criticize his training he's extremely good we'll see what happens still stays on extremely good but sometimes if there is if their morale is a little bit lower than that um if you do kick them up the ass they can actually move their morale up which is you know a weird case but sometimes some players just need that little bit of a boost uh, a little bit of, as i said kick up the ass uh, just to get them back on track and just show show the player that the that the manager cares that he's looking at him that he's you know constantly he's he's got his eye on him he's watching him in training so um the other thing you can do in terms of praising and criticizing is the overall form. So last five games, we can have a look. And every now and then, if we've got a couple of players that are um, playing quite well at the moment, we don't. Um, so I wouldn't probably praise anyone. But this is maybe an instance because our, our form has been quite poor is when I want to criticize. Um, up to you on what kind of rules you, you do in terms of what kind of rating you're looking for. Personally, I look for 7.5 and above, which I've got no one. Um, if I'm looking to criticize, I'll look for 6.7 and below. So the 6.6 is, um, at the moment, there's no one. Um, but sometimes there is, and you know, that can give you a good boost. Um, for players that I found that actually um, gives a player, if I've um, criticized a player, I see, I see pretty instant results in terms of his uh, performance on the pitch. So that can come in handy uh, for, a couple, for a couple of things, not just your player morale. Also, you can um, you can actually go to the last match. So if, say, for example, we had, we don't look at the result and who it was against. Um, if there was a player that played particularly well, um, typically I wouldn't do this if we lost, but if we won, uh, if there's a player that played particularly well, we've got a couple of players, Sergio Romero, we had Belotti play quite well, um, I would look to praise that player for the last game. So we just right click, uh, speak about, we want to go praise uh, in last game. So we want to pray, praise for last game. He might, he might say, not very good. No thanks boss. So he actually did get a boost from that. Um, if on the flip side of that, coming out of this if on the flip side of that if someone did perform quite bad once again i've got the same kind of rating so 6.6 6.5 and down so we've got a couple plays in that and then you can criticize the players so just make sure you know what you're criticizing about and exactly why he had a bad performance or why he had a good performance so uh if it was a uh, say a defender and you're criticizing him for his passing game then 
obviously he's going to get a little bit upset. Um, same thing with a striker. So if you're criticizing a striker for not getting enough shots on goal or not creating enough chances or whatever, but he didn't get the supply, um, then he's going to kick up a stink as well. So you just got to watch out um, and also watch out the different personalities that you're actually praising or criticizing because they will react differently. The last thing you can do to increase morale is um, have a team meeting. This is a kind of hit and miss because a lot of times you can cock up the whole thing. Um, what I We've been playing pretty poorly lately, so assertively, um, I'm really keen to see our heads don't drop and see what happens. Another meeting, great. So it looks like, as I told you, it could be hit and miss. Um, so it looks like I've had a couple, I've had too many meetings um, recently. So that might be something that you also want to put, there it is, in your notebook on when you've had a team meeting, so you don't want to schedule them too often. Um, you can't choose a team meeting uh, all the time. So if I go in there now, well, it's already done. Um, but if I go in there, no, it's going to keep on doing it. If I click continue and then went in there again, it won't actually allow me to have the team meeting. Uh, code of conduct is a new feature in the game um, and essentially you set this up at the start just just hit confirm i think um, this is all if you miss training if you go on awol um, yeah if you've got multiple bookings so uh, I've, i found this year it's been pretty good so every time with the code of conduct i haven't really thought about how many weeks fine i'm going to give him um, i've just hit confirm that i don't get upset um, which is quite good so um, but yeah that's already pre kind of set in the game if you do want to change that and be a little bit harsher you can um, in saying your team morale and what i'm looking for my profile in saying all the team morale and everything like that um, and how you can increase it and what you should do. We'll come back over to the manager attributes because that's what, uh, in the first video, I did say motivating was an important attribute to have. So if you are starting out a save and your motivating is quite low, it's going to be harder to actually do all those player interactions and to, you can still do them, but you're just not going to get the boost that uh, someone with you know 20 in motivating will have um also in level of discipline as well so with level 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 of discipline that will if you if it is higher that will stop the players coming to you um for for their little gripes for their you know playing time so it'll, it'll when it really starts to bottle up and they will then come to you but um yeah another important thing if you are looking to choose a save that you know you've got a you know some big personalities a squad uh, that can cause a bit of issues if they do kick up a stink um if you want to keep this side motivated is have a look at that motivating attribute um, when you are first choosing the save because it can make a big difference all right, so I think that's I think that's about it. So we went through everything um, needed. So we went through the overall, the team cohesion, dressing room atmosphere. Yeah, we went through everything. Um, hopefully, you've got a little bit out of this video. Um, if you are a new player, if you've been playing for a while, hope you've got a little bit out of it. If you have, um, once again, that admin, hit the like button, subscribe. Um, and I'll see you next time. We'll come back for, a, I'm guessing, a big one. Uh, we'll come back for tactics. So we'll go through the tactics. We'll go through everything involved in the tactics. All up here, the player, the set people. Well, this is going to be a long episode. The set pieces, the cap. Oh, yeah, we can go through the captains. We'll go through everything. Um, so yeah, next episode will be on tactics. So look forward to that. Um, and I'll see you next time.